So you were first up the, this evening and that you were first out of the, the stalls with a question for the, for the panel and for the audience. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about your question and whether you got a good answer or not? Were you happy with uh, what came back to you? Yeah, my question was about uh, the Hotel of the Future. At Premier Inn, uh, we keep investing in improving the guest experience inside our hotel estate. And uh, my question was, if you were to start a hotel from scratch, what are the kind of digital innovation considerations and constraints um, would the experts on the panel start with? So I think one of the panels said that we'd start with a bar, but but joking aside, yeah. um, I think one of the other panel members, I think it was Susie, said actually that would be wonderful. Uh, it would be so much easier to start from scratch because there are yeah. so many legacy systems. Yeah. Um, so the answers that came back were in fact that, well, you either try to do it internally, but that's very difficult for a legacy company, and there are so many, you know, uh, responsibilities in terms of focusing on the beds and and uh, the the basic customer experience. So some people were saying they go out and they work with technology providers. Uh, would you agree with that, or, or where are you going in that model? I think it's the right balance. I think somebody used the word balance in the panel, which is which is uh, you know the the key to to having a good strategy. Um, I think we feel, uh, I think somebody else on the panel also mentioned that having internal capabilities to analyze, comprehend, and assimilate the digital change is, is very, very important. And, and we are doing that. So we are setting up our own digital capabilities, and we have uh, multifunctional teams of our own working on web technologies, app technologies, and, and also integration technologies. So as a business, we feel that starting from the consumer, looking at, uh, somebody mentioned pain points, I mean, we call them empathy maps. Starting with the empathy maps, understanding the consumer journeys, and then trying to add value where it really matters, where it really moves the needle on the customer satisfaction curve, and, and also the commercial goals is, is where we start with. And then work backwards. So um, it, it was a very good discussion. Somebody talked about the reputation management being a good starting point. Um, there were points made about um, the hotel check-in and how Checkmate, Revenate, all those products. What can we learn from them? How do we select technologies? I think, I think it was a very good discussion. So a lot of the panel were coming at this from very different perspectives. Yes. Um, so Tripti is coming at it obviously from a, a, a direct distribution perspective, but then the panel, uh, many of the panel agreeing that in reality they couldn't survive without Booking.com. But ultimately they all agreed in fact, even though they have very different uh, viewpoints in that they all said balance I is the key point and it's about finding uh, you know, the, the right balance. But in fact, some argued further and said, well actually it's about, it's a shift towards direct um, but in fact, there's an opportunity lost, in fact, that it's about not just changing the shift, but it's actually going back to the customer and finding out what they really want. Yeah, end of the day, I think what I really liked was somebody mentioned the customer owns the customer. Eventually, the customer will decide which channel, which device, uh, what lead time are they happy to book, what, you know, essentially, you have to take the anxiety out of uh, the booking process and make the whole journey as seamless and comfortable for the consumer. Now, you know, there was also a mention of um, power, cost, and differentiation. I think from a theoretical construct, it couldn't have been summed up better than that. So there is always a power struggle between different distribution partners, different channels. The cost economics of channels keep changing over time. So I think as a business, we keep an eye on, on the current uh, tactical and operational need, but also looking ahead. So, you know, somebody mentioned social media and programmatic and data sharing. So all these, uh, and that is the whole idea why somebody like me comes to these seminars. I mean, I've been coming to Kevin's seminar since 2008 and part of the old furniture. And, and uh, last year I was a panelist here and this year, you know, asking all these questions. It's, it's great fun to understand what are the themes? Where is the industry going? What are the kind of um, challenges which we face day in and day out? And taking some time out and having fun. So a perfect segue into the fact or into the question, which is, you know, how is this kind of environment, the small environment, unique? Because most of us are used to big, big conferences, yeah. big presentations with very little audience interaction, um, where in reality, most of the conversation here came from the audience. There were questions that were coming uh, from the audience. You obviously come to these events and you're a fan because you learn, because you want to hear what others are doing and saying. Um, obviously, it's a, a valuable environment. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, 
on the panel, they always have somebody from the system integration partners, somebody from the hotel industry, somebody from one of the innovative product. This year it was Triptease. So it's a good com combination. And then there's always the external viewpoint that should the technologists lead the, the innovation or should there be the industry which defines what it really needs. I don't think there's a clear answer. And, and that's what I, I, you know, come here to immerse myself into into what is going on in the online travel and the travel industry in general. So I think it was Susie who came up with the answer, which is it, the, the best experience for her is collaboration. Yes. Neither party understands it perfectly. They both need to work together. Absolutely. And, and we are a firm believer in that. We work with a variety of partners for systems integration, uh, you know, product vendors, uh, small niche providers who provide, you know, uh, widgets and and cool stuff, and, and always keep learning and innovating. So, a, a, a travel technology event, um, but in reality, uh, we discussed the consumer, we discussed the customer, we discussed yeah. very little technology. Um, but where technology did come up was the issue of, um, you know, only the big players can afford this, and the niche smaller players are more and more being priced out of the market. Um, how do you think they're going to handle the future in terms of the amount of mergers that are going on, the amount of acquisitions, um, and the, the, you know, whether we like it or not, the, the importance of technology? Yeah, I think uh, Alex Bainbridge made a very important point. Uh, if you were to look at four or five years ahead, will the messenger bots take over the world, which was a you know, thought-provoking uh, point. And I remember 2008, uh, me asking a question, would there be play for social media aggregation? And there was a Facebook panelist that year, and, and uh, uh, he mentioned, now that you've asked the question, but potentially there is an opportunity. But I'm not sure anybody is making in money in social media aggregation. Definitely there are lots of uh, uh, platforms and tools. So so these are, these are things which you can, you know, there's no crystal ball, and, and you have to take it step by step. Uh, will the messenger bots be the future? Um, I'm not quite sure. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things that can happen between now and five years which will change the game. But uh, thought-provoking, that's what it is all about. And Alex is good fun for these kind of things. So, and, and let's finish on that. And that uh, an interesting point came from the audience, uh, and I think Susie answered it again, which was, you know, uh, pay-per-click has been, you know, the power play for the last many, many years, mm -hmm. and it's got more and more expensive, but people have stuck with it. And then this year, she said, Facebook has just changed the game for them. Um, so again, would anyone predict that? We don't know. And five years from now, we don't know. But essentially, I think Susie summed it up very nicely. You know, it's a question of building that relationship on an ongoing basis, the trust, the, the I mean, I hate to use the word loyalty, but it's it's basically the understanding and the rapport with the consumer which you build over a period of time with a high repeat consumer base in a in a hotel uh, chain. Um, I, think, I think the onus is on the hotel chain to really harness the data, uh, really build that, uh, that that relationship by offering the consistent and, and value added experience every time the guest walks in. So I think that that that's what is the holy grail. And, and then, you know, there are, could be different manifestations. Earlier it was the search engine marketing. Today it's uh, Facebook and programmatic, which is perhaps perhaps proving to be more efficient for certain marketeers. But tomorrow it could be something else. But I think in the hospitality industry, the, the guest experience, the satisfaction, the rapport and relationship, especially coming from our own people, is, is key. I think that's a good point to finish on. Deepak, thanks for your time. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers.